My name's Jennifer Blaine, and on this episode of Cafe New Guinea, we will reveal to you some of the exotic food cultures of Medang province. We'll also be sharing with you various ways of preparing dalit nut, which is considered to be a delicacy in some parts of Papua New Guinea. We'll be looking at unique dishes such as tapal, made from tapioca, and also the diverse cooking styles of Rewa village. Our road trip exploring Papua New Guinean cultures and cuisines leads us to the beautiful Medang province. First stop, we visit the friendly community of Rewa village. Rewa is a part of a cluster of islands and coastal communities within the Medang Lagoon area. Medang Lagoon is a fisherman's paradise with a vast marine network of reefs, deep sea currents and mangrove ecosystems. It is an ideal spawning environment for rainbow runner, tuna, mackerel and many other fish species. I met up with a friend of mine, Rewo Women's Representative, Magdalene Mizu, who is eager to show us the culinary specialties of her village. Firstly, we go find some fish from a local fisherman. And Slimmer's husband has just come in from Medang Lagoon with a big catch. We've got here some shark meat here that he's cut up and prepared to sell. We've got some marlin here as well, a very good fish. We've also got some juvenile yellowfin and some rainbow runner. Magdalene, you think, let me kiss him on and fist and cook you. No, no, son. Rainbow runner. So we're going to get some rainbow runner to cook up today with our dish. Magdalene's going to cook this up. I'm here in Rewa village with Magdalene and Clara and we're going to be cooking up a traditional dish for you today called anang. So here we have some ibica which is very very high in iron. We've got some fish here for our protein. We've also got some local sweet potatoes very high in calcium. Some Singapore taro. Pit pit which is actually a flower from a grass. We've got the ground sago over there and some grated coconut. We're going to cook up all these delicious foods together and have a taste of rewa cooking. The first preparation in our Anung feast is making pit pit wrapped in ibica leaves. Strips of the pit pit husk are turned into useful string to tie the wrap together. All of the pit pit are wrapped in this fashion and left in a bowl. Next, grated coconut flesh is squeezed in large amounts to make coconut milk. The coconut milk is poured onto sweet potato and Singapore taro to form a base in the pot and is taken to the fire to boil. Once boiling, the pit pit wraps are laid down on the bed of thickened coconut milk and root vegetables. This ensures the wraps absorb the rich flavour of the coconut cream. Ibica leaves are then added on top as a cover to seal in all the juices. The lid is placed on top and all the ingredients are left to simmer together. The boys have just roasted up the pit pit and I can tell you, this is a really great food. Pit pit, it's such a great and versatile food. You can dice it and cook it up in any sort of food that you want. You can have it in curries or stir fries. Whatever you cook it in, it'll soak up that flavour. It's a really great vegetarian food, but I myself like it fresh off the fire. Let's have a taste. You can taste the, the smokiness from it being roasted on the fire. It's just so delicious. It's spongy, it's juicy at the same time. Pit pit, I tell you, it's a really great food. The next step in preparing the Anung feast is making the Sago Pit Pit coconut rolls. The husk of the roasted Pit Pit is peeled off, revealing a soft and pithy flesh. The Pit Pit is ready to be combined with the Sago flour. Magdalene and Clara are now pressing the Sago flour into the Pit Pit. Because the Pit Pit is nice and moist, it sticks to the outside of the Pit Pit and then it's going to be placed in some boiling water. Once boiled, 
the sago completely seals over the pit pit stalk. It is drained with a coconut husk. The sago and pit pit is rolled in freshly scraped coconut. This adds a sweet, creamy and crunchy touch of the sago and pit pit. In preparing the seafood dish for the Anung feast, a white fish is used. In this dish, we are preparing rainbow runner. Fresh limes are collected from the household garden and squeezed straight onto the flesh of the fish. In boiling coconut milk, the pieces of fish are left to cook in a pot on the hot embers of the fire. Now here we are amongst this magnificent, colourful smorgasbord of food here that these beautiful ladies Magdalene and Clara have cooked up. Let's have a taste. We've got the sago and the pit pit. All the different textures really come through there, the juicy, spongy pit pit and the crunchy coconut. Let's try some of this fish, this beautiful rainbow runner. Mmm. Cooked perfectly. There is nothing like rainbow runner cooked up in coconut milk. Really delicious. We've got here some Singapore taro and some kao kao. I can have a bit of this sweet potato with it. Mmm. Always deliciously creamy and sweet. And now, let's try this. This is the pit pit that we wrapped up in the ibica leaf. A bit like a spring roll, but much healthier. Mmm. Deliciously juicy and so full of flavour. And I've just got the last bit of fish there. Let's have a look. Some more fish, hey? Mmm, please, oh, mama. You plan us making good today. Thank you, Tre. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Delicious cooking from Rewo. I'm here with Magdalene's husband and I'm about to try some kava, as they call it in Fiji, but here in Papua New Guinea it's called cognac. John, you got some plus story blog? Cognac too? Oh yeah. Cognac before I'm all online uh the mood and before the old drink the old people are question and time though walk him out, na time though sap him canu, no black canu, na time though money die old child. It's a fight in this la cognac na drink. Now now um how um culture I'm saying is now when I'm some things that come up. Now come up. <laughs> now we want the beer to come inside now the man. Only tasting beer and only tasting kawa now. Just let me must like tasting all the avenue or kind something also. Now kawa is um uh it's popular now beer and plus to also beer now. You see more some home brew or kind something. All the avenue all the time all man like sit down all must fight in kawa and drink pasta mm -hmm. like that. Now before um all same all man does also drink kawa and now. Yeah, now I'm um, uh, all married, we all, also drink. Before, we um, got big uh, law. Uh, all Lapun man, that's all, all big man, all the same. All, uh, Lapun Lili, all the same. We got young people, even all stop the school, too. All the time. Okay. All right, so I think this time, Bami Tribe Lili Cognac. Now, looking for him, taste them, and I can tell you what it tastes like. Thank you. I'm down in Mulgeta. You One drop of salon. Hi, yo, please, okay. Hi, please. Strong play <laughs> herbs, they are very spicy. Hey, cook him next, it really burns your neck going down, but it's very nice, spicy. Very spicy and numbing to the tongue. <laughs> After enjoying the Anung feast and tasting the spicy kava root, Magdalene and Clara took me on a short walk through their food gardens. They want to show me their gardening and yam growing techniques. This is garden for you, huh? I'm garden blown. garden Nice garden. We can look at you planting some like corn, you put the ground, the ass floor. Uh, yam yam, you line up and we'll get a stick nice plus thread. Now, you story Lily Glow, yam yam, you plus a putty ground last time, no one. 
Mi plasa kam wante mol mangi. Na mol mangi sa digi mol pinis. Mi plasa putim jam igo inside lol. Na mi plal mama mi plasa straight tim jam putim ground nanta. Pinis putim lik lik ground pinis na mol mangi kam na ulsa wane bol putim big plag ground no sim. So lo plani mi ay manigat walk blong em lo mekim na meri gat walk blong em lo mekim na meri gat walk blong em manigat walk blong em. Okay. Kaya man em time kru blong em kamap na em walk blong em lo em kam sanapin. Okay, all stick na ba? Okay. Na mi plal meri blo vidim grass, ba mi plal gim smooth lo jam. Mi plal vidim all grass pinis mi plal sa walk im pa ya. Na em Smoke blow paya ya sa kisim mol jam ya. Okay. Same sa stopi mol yam ya lo have yellow or kind of same ay. Na tu usen smoke kisim yam. Hmm. Emol sem jam usen. Emam blong. Emam mas now. Na ba inside long kai kai blong in inside long mountain tu. Em ba emam mas now na on ba ne mi karam good now. Suppose ni plan na look out in. Em ba yam ba ken ino ken karam planti. So, Magdalene, this is pit-pit that you cook one time, ma? Yes, pit-pit. Okay, pit-pit, we have to plan in our garden. We have to plan in our garden, and we have to plan in our garden. We have to plan in our garden. Pit-pit, all the tapioc. So, also go inside the whole block where the yam is coming outside. We have to plan in pit-pit going inside. Okay, I'm good. We leave Rewa village and travel 53 kilometers up the highway. We then make our way by dinghy to volcanic Kaka Island. Local tourist operator Paula Siongula takes us to a scenic guest house called Tugutugu. We then go by motorbike to have a look at a local gullet nut tree. I'm at the foot of a gallop tree, and wow, as you can see, it really towers above the rest of the vegetation around here. This is the gallop fruit, and this is the shell that houses the gallop nut. Not only is this delicious, but it's also high in essential fatty acids, and plays a central role to the diet of the islanders. This nut can rest on the forest floor for a few years and still retain its freshness. Let's go and have a look at the many different ways in which this nut is prepared. Back at Tugutugu Guest House, the Yongulu family are busy crushing up gullet nuts in preparation for making prong, a kaka speciality. In a deep mortar made from wood, fire-roasted taro is added to crushed gullet nuts. The gullet and the fire-roasted taro are then pounded together with a long wooden pestle. Cooked banana is also put into the mixture to increase the sweetness and moisture of the dish. The mixture is placed in a bowl and oil from the gallop nut is used to soften and combine the ingredients together over a fire. The result is a moist and rich fudge with a pleasant almondy aroma. I'm on Kakar Island at the Tugutugu guest house with Betty and her family. The prong has finished being prepared and now I'm going to taste some. Thank you, Betty. Welcome. Thank you. Mmm, this is really delicious. It's got a very smooth, sweet, creamy and nutty flavour. I can really taste the gallop in this. Thank you, Betty. Welcome. <laughs> Next on the menu is the savoury pudding tapa. Tapioca wrapped in fern leaves are boiled 
unwrapped and placed in a dish. The tapioca is compacted together with small wooden paddles. Coconut is poured in and mixed with the tapioca until the substance is gelatinous and sticky. This dish is called tapal. It was traditionally used in times of conflict as a peace treaty. Nowadays, the women sell it at the market. We're just going to cover it up and let the hot oil cool and we'll come back to it tomorrow for a taste. Okay, you make it up Wow, the coconut cream solidified and it's turned into a real pudding now. Let's have a taste. Mmm, it's got a bitter, full and very creamy flavour. Susie, please, I'm just sweet, I'm nice here. Tapalia, carrots. Thank you. <laughs> We're about to go for a drive to check out the scenery on Kakar Island. Let's go, Roger. Driving along the Takia coast reveals picturesque ocean views of lagoons and village hamlets. Karkar is divided into the northern Waskia people and the southern Takia people. After our pleasant scenic drive, it is time to go visit Bagia village where they have generously organized some local cultural performances. Walking into Bagia village, we are greeted by kundu drum beats and traditional chanting. I can feel the excitement and celebratory energy building up already. Bagia's theatre group invites us into their village with the rhythmic beating of the garamut drum. As a final welcoming gesture, we are presented with a colourful sing-sing performance. The day continues with the theatre performances and drama plays, which everyone, including me, find hilariously funny. Walking around observing some culinary presentations, I take snapshots to remember this exquisite demonstration of Bagia culture. I am impressed by the diversity of traditional arts of Bagia village, and as the performances continued, I can feel a strong sense of cultural vitality amongst these vibrant Karkar Islanders, and am amazed by their generous hospitality and friendly nature.
After our travels exploring the cultures and beautiful scenery of Kaka Island, we were invited to Giao Guest House to taste their special delicacies. It is dusk and the end of our day trip around Kaka Island. The Giao villagers were eager to show us their special bush food, Karasong Kwagi. But first we were treated to an elaborate demonstration of the tapal dish. We've arrived at Giel Guest House and these lovely women here have prepared some demonstrations for us for different foods from Kaka. I've got here in my hand a particular food called Marasang Kwagi and this particular dish has been cooked with the fruit from the tulip tree. The seed from inside has been removed and it's been stuffed with crushed garlic nut. It's been wrapped up in this leaf here and roasted on the fire. Let's have a taste and see what it's like. Mmm, this is just so delicious. It's very sweet from the ripe fruit. I can taste the creaminess of the gallop and the sweet flavor of the tulip fruit on the outside as well. A really wonderful dish. I hope you've enjoyed Medang Province and all the fantastic natural cuisines and flavors it has to offer. Medang is an amazingly beautiful province and the people work hard to maintain their gardens and produce food that is both tasty and nutritious. If you have a food story you'd like to share with us, go to our Cafe New Guinea website. Until next time, goodbye and God bless. <laughs>